The universe doesn't always speak to us in an actual human-sounding voice that tells us something in our, our language of origin. Yes, it did happen to me at a very pivotal moment when I came to Rishikesh and walked through this ashram and heard a voice that said, you must stay here. But remember, I was in a position in my life, a time in my life in which I wasn't listening. I always say God had to hit me over the head with a baseball bat. People talk about the touch of God. And I very well may have been touched more gently in previous days. But because I wasn't listening or open to it or seeking on any level that I was aware of, it needed to be so undeniable, so unignorable, so unrationalizable that I really didn't have any possible option other than to listen to it. So yeah, I heard a voice that said, you must stay here. But that's not, not only is that not always how it happens, that's not usually how it happens. If you look at nature, and for me, I always take teachings from nature. Everything in nature seems to get wisdom in different ways. You look at how a caterpillar somehow knows to climb a tree and weave a cocoon and then burst out as a butterfly. You look at how a tree knows not to grow up, but to grow sideways. Those, those trees, if you spend time in the forest, which I love to do, you'll always see that even though most trees grow up, Every once in a while, you'll find a tree growing horizontal to the ground. Every other tree is growing straight up. But this one somehow understood when she was still quite young, quite close to the ground, that if she grew straight up in the sky, she wouldn't get the light that she needed for photosynthesis in order to properly grow, that her light was going to be sideways, that she needed to actually move horizontally out of the denseness of where she was in order to get light. How does she know? I don't know, but she knows. Different species, all the different species of animal, even those who were left by their mothers at very, very young critical ages, somehow they know. How does a bird know how to build a nest? I mean, just think about it for a moment. Mother birds leave their baby birds when they're babies. That baby grows up. How does she know how to build a nest? How does she know to sit on an egg? She doesn't have any past life knowledge of, oh yeah, when I was in the egg, I remember the, you know, in utero consciousness here. They don't have that. How does she know? Again, I don't know. Other than to say there is a wisdom in the universe. And the creator of this universe, however we may think of him, her, it, they, whatever concept we connect to for that divine capital P planner of the universe was sure to make sure that every single being had that intelligence in it. And so to me, it's inconceivable that as humans, we wouldn't have that. And so all I can tell you is that if that wisdom is in caterpillars and trees 
and every other species on this planet. It's in us. I think the dilemma is that we perhaps are the only species whose minds are so full of our own ego that it's really hard to figure out what is the voice of that wisdom. I can't imagine that a caterpillar's mind is so full of other stuff or that a tree is also getting, in addition to the wisdom to grow sideways, that she's also getting all kinds of nonsense signals that say, God, did you see that one? He's so much bigger than you are, so much more beautiful. I bet your fruit is going to be bitter and small and shriveled. You know, trees don't get signals like that. So they're able to take the signals that come and live by them. And to me, that really shows the way for us to hear those voices in whatever way they come, whether actually as a clear, booming voice or just as what you would call an intuition, a sense of knowing that you don't know how you knew. And I think the way is simply to clear away the other voices rather than searching for that voice to just clear away the other voices so you can hear it. And that's, that's what the practice of meditation does so well, is it, it really helps us gain clarity on self and not self. True self and yammering voices in my head you start to really be able to distinguish that which is coming up from within and that which is just like a broken record playing from the neurons in your brain as you've been programmed. And so allow your practice to be one that's focused on achieving a degree of stillness and quietness and spaciousness in which you can hear and feel. And the last point of that that I think is important is also trust. You know, I always say you never see a butterfly crawl back down the tree because she doesn't believe she can actually fly. You know, she comes out of the cocoon but still identifies as a caterpillar and so, you know, kind of backs her way down the tree. You never see it. There is a, there is a faith somehow that all of nature has that doesn't second guess itself, that doesn't doubt itself. And if you can find that faith, so when you hear the voice in whatever way it comes, when you feel the intuition in whatever way it comes, to trust it and to go with it. And you'll, you'll develop a, what we call a sanskara, a pattern of trusting. And you may start small and then you'll go into bigger and bigger things. But just start trusting it. Start using your intuition instead of always doing pros and cons lists. They're great. I love them. I do them personally. But instead of always doing them, sometimes just allow yourself. Just tune in. What's my intuition say? And go with it. It's scary for those of us who are overly rational. But it will strengthen a muscle that you already have. And it'll train you to hear it and to listen to it and to start following it. And then it'll get louder. When you're listening, it gets louder. <laughs>